In this lecture, you're going to learn about can deactivate route card in Angular. So the can deactivate route card decides whether a user can navigate away from a route or not. A simple use case where we can use this can activate route card is when a user is entering some data in a form in the web page. So let's say the user has filled the data in the form and then he tries to leave the view without saving the work. In that case, we can use this can deactivate route card and the can deactivate route card will give us a chance to warn the user that he has not saved his data. And it will also give him a chance to cancel the navigation. So for example, in this Angular application, we have this contact form. So let's say I enter some data in this contact form and by mistake, I click on one of these links. So you can see that it has navigated me to that link. Now, what we want is when a user has entered some data in these fields and when he click on any other link in the web page or when he clicks on this back button without submitting the form, in that case, we want to display him a confirm window with the message saying that you have unsaved changes. Do you want to discard these changes? So a confirm window will display two buttons, the OK button and the cancel button. Now when the user clicks OK button, that means he want to navigate away from this page. In that case, we will navigate him away from that page, from this contact page. But if he clicks on the cancel button, that means he has accidentally clicked on the link or the back button and he want to save the changes. So when he clicks on the cancel button, we want to keep him on that same page on this contact page. Let's see how we can implement this functionality using can deactivate route card. So let's go to VS code. And the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to create a route card service class. So inside this app folder, let's create a new file and let's call this file can deactivate guard service. And inside this file, let's create and export a class and let's call this class can deactivate guard service. Now, since we want to use the can deactivate route card, we need to make this class implement an interface, which is can deactivate. Okay. So this class should implement this can deactivate interface and in order to use this interface we also need to import it from angular slash router now this can deactivate interface has a method called can deactivate so since we are implementing this can deactivate interface we also need to implement that method which this can deactivate interface is providing and the method name is can deactivate okay and also remember that this can deactivate is of generic type. So here we need to specify a type. For now, let's use T here. All right. Now this can deactivate method takes four parameters and the last parameter is an optional parameter. So the first parameter is the component on which we want to use this route card. So again, for now, let's use T. Then the second parameter is of type activated route snapshot. So let's call this parameter current route and it is of type activated route snapshot. And in order to use this activated route snapshot, we also need to import it from angular slash router. Then the third parameter is of type router state snapshot. So let's call this parameter current state and the type is router state snapshot. And the last and optional parameter is again of type router state snapshot. So let's call it next state. And again, it is going to be of type router state snapshot. And this can deactivate method should return a Boolean value. It should return either true or false. So for now, let's return false from here. So we have learned that when a route guard method returns false, it stops the navigation. It does not allow user to navigate away from the current route. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, this 
can deactivate interface is of generic type. So here we specify the type on which we want to use this can deactivate route card. In this example, we want to use this can deactivate route card on this contact component. Okay, so here instead of T, let's specify that component name. So the name is contact component. And in order to use this contact component, we also need to import it. In the same way, instead of this T, again, let's specify the component name, which is contact component. Okay, so to this component parameter, we specify the component on which we want to use this can deactivate route card. All right, so here we have created our route guard service. We have implemented the route guard interface and we have also implemented the method of that route guard interface. Now the next step is to provide this service. So for that, let's go to app modules. And here inside this providers array, let's provide this service. So the name of this service is can deactivate guard service. And in order to use this service, we also need to import it. And finally, we also need to assign this service to can deactivate property of the route. So let's open this app routing module here. And we want to use can deactivate route card on this route. So on this route, let's use can deactivate property. And to this, we can assign an array. And inside this array, we can specify the service name, which is implementing the can deactivate interface. So in this example, it is this service. So let's copy this service name and let's specify it here. Now, in order to use this service, we also need to import it. So I will copy this import statement from this app module and I will use it inside this app routing module. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and now let's go to this contact page and here now if i try to navigate away from this page so if i click on this courses link or this about link or this home link it is not allowing us to navigate away that's because from this can deactivate method we are returning this value false but if i return true in that case it will allow us to navigate away so now if I click on any of these links, it is allowing us to navigate away. Okay. So here we are returning a hard-coded Boolean value. But what we want is instead of returning a hard-coded Boolean value, we want to return a Boolean value based on a condition. So in this contact page, we have these four fields. So let's say if any of these fields has been populated with some value. So let's say if the user has entered some data in any one of these fields and if he try to navigate away from this page without clicking on this submit button, then we want to display a confirm window to the user. So what I'm going to do is here in this page, we have four fields. So for these four fields, let's go ahead and let's create four properties inside this contact component. So let's go to contact component class and here let's create four properties. The first property is going to be first name. Then let's also have another property called last name, then country, and then subject. Okay, so for these four fields, this first name, last name, country, and subject, we have created these four properties. Now let's go ahead and let's do two way data binding with these input elements. So on this input element, let's use two-way data binding. For that, we can use ng model. And to this ng model, let's assign the first name property. In the same way, let's copy this ng model from here. And let's put it on the second input element as well, where it is asking for last name. And here, let's bind this ng model with this last name property. Okay, now just to be sure, let's copy these property names from here and let's paste it here. Okay, let's do the same thing for other two input fields. So let's add this 
on this select element and here let's set the property name to country so here we are binding this ng model to this country property okay so to this property and in the same way let's also bind this text area using this ng model so let's do it here and here let's bind this ng model to this subject okay let me move it to a separate line so that it will be more readable all right so now what will happen is whatever value we will enter in these fields that value will get assigned to these properties and initially if you notice these fields are empty so that means initially these properties will be assigned with empty string so inside this contact component class what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a method let's call this method can exit and inside this method i will check if any one of these properties has a value for that we can use if statement and inside this we can say if this dot first name so if this first name will have some value in that case this dot first name will return true because here this if statement will type coerce that string value to its boolean type so if the first name is empty string that means if the user has not entered anything in the first name text box in that case this dot first name will return false but if the user has entered something in the first name text box that value will be assigned to this first name property and in that case this dot first name will return true okay in the same way let's also check if the last name has some value let's also check if this country property have some value and finally let's also check if the subject has some value so if any one of these properties has a value in that case if the user tries to navigate away we want to show him a confirm window so for that we can use this confirm function inside this we can show a message to the user and let's say we want to display you have unsaved changes do you really want to discard these changes now if the user will click on the ok button in that case this confirm window will return true this confirm function will return true and if the user clicks on the cancel button in that case this confirm function will return false and we want to return that value that boolean value from this if statement else we simply want to return true because if the user has not entered anything in the text boxes in that case we want to let the user to navigate away okay so here we have created this can exit method now let's go back to our can deactivate route card service and here instead of returning this hard coded value true what we are going to do is we are going to call this can exit method of this contact component so we are assigning this contact component to this component parameter so let's use this component parameter and on this component parameter we want to call this can exit method and this can exit method is going to return a boolean value and that same value we want to return from this can deactivate method with this let's save the changes let's go back to the web page let's go to this contact page and here let's enter something in this text box and let's try to navigate away from this contact page so when i click on this about link you will notice that it has displayed us a confirm window with this message you have unsaved changes do you really want to discard these changes if i click on this cancel button we will stay in that page but if we click on this ok button we will be navigated away in the same way if i enter something here and if i click on this back button again it will ask us this question do we really want to discard these changes if i click cancel we will stay in this page but if i click okay then we will be navigated away okay so this is how a can deactivate route card can be used now the problem with this implementation is that now we can only use this can deactivate route card on this contact component because here we are explicitly specifying the 
component name for this this type here and also for this component parameter so what if we also want to use this can deactivate route card on other components so what we want is we want to create a general purpose deactivate route card and to do that what we need to do is we need to create an interface for that we can use this interface keyword then let's provide a name for this interface and let's call it i deactivate component okay and let's also export this interface so that it can be used outside of this file and inside this i deactivate component interface let's declare a method and let's call this method can exit now this method is not going to take any parameter and it is going to return either an observable which will emit a boolean value or it can return a promise which will resolve to a boolean value or it can also simply return a boolean value and now on whichever component we want to use this can deactivate route card that component should implement this i deactivate component interface okay so the first thing which we need to do here is instead of specifying this component name we are going to specify this interface name okay so instead of contact component let's specify i deactivate component let's do the same thing here so to this component parameter we are specifying we are assigning this i deactivate component and now we want to use this can deactivate on the contact component right so now this contact component should implement this i deactivate component interface so here let's also implement i deactivate component interface and in order to use this interface we also need to import it okay and this i deactivate component interface is declaring this can exit method so we also need to implement that method inside this contact component class and we are already doing this so if i save the changes and if i go to the web page the functionality here should still be working as earlier so if i enter something in these text boxes okay and instead of submitting the form if i try to navigate away it is displaying this confirm window if i click on cancel i will stay in this page but if i click on okay i will navigate away from this page but now this can deactivate route card is a general purpose route card so now you can use this can deactivate route card on any component the only requirement is that that component should implement this i deactivate component interface okay so this is the use of can deactivate route card it determines whether we can navigate away from a route or not